What's up guys, welcome back to Zombie Night here, your Tekken Games Crusader. And then we have another unboxing. This is the first of the modules for the Polymega Multi-Console. This is the EM01 Power Element module set. It is compatible with original Nintendo game cartridges and controllers. Polymega base unit, of course, required. Here's mine controller looks great it is a sleeved cable so looking on the side of the box just the same thing same thing polymega info back of the box plug in power up compatible with the original nes games and controllers power element module set em01 is Power packed time machine featuring low latency controller ports and wide compatibility with some of video gaming's greatest hits. For an authentic gaming experience, a bonus Polymega Power Retro Controller is included. Compatible with NES game cartridges, just plug Element Module EM01 into the base unit and enjoy region free compatibility with NES games. NES game cartridges from North American and PAL regions using a patent pending modular system. Premium wired retro controller included. Element module sets include a premium wired retro controller with 8 foot braided cord and exclusive home button for accessing system functionality at the press of a button. Digitize your game collection. Play hassle and worry-free with a convenient installation feature, enabling you to make a, digi a personal digital backup of your cartridge games to an eye-catching user interface. Ultra-low latency controller ports. Take your game to the next level with ultra-low latency controller ports built right into the front of the module. Play with Friends, using a combination of the module and console controller ports. So, here's how it's going to look. Polymega Power Element Module Set EM0 includes five digital bonus games preloaded. We got Eight Eyes, Treasure Master, Target Renegade, Power Punch 2, which is Mike Tyson's Punch-Out 2, and Nightshade. Included in the box, we got Power Module EM0 NES, Power Retro Controller RC01, and a one-year warranty. I don't see a one-year warranty being included in the box. Polymega Base Unit Required Model PM01 Sold Separately. For compatibility information, please visit polymega.com. Game cartridges not included. Alright, so we got circle tapes on here. I'm wondering if we'll have the same oily fingerprints inside of this on the unit for the EN01 module as we did on our PM01 Polymega base unit. And then it basically just tells me that these things were being rushed into production, and they were just trying to get it done as quick as possible, so they just went around and did not wear gloves, or whenever they took them out of the boxes to test when putting them back in the boxes, they weren't wearing gloves. So one way or another, you have uh, skin oils fingerprints and stuff on them i can tell you that this circle tape is not you know multi-time removed like it was on the original like it was on here like they were a lot easier to remove so maybe these are just not tested or not repackaged or refurbished which is what i was getting the inkling of idea of what they did with this Right. 
Give me a moment, guys, and I'll get this done. Okay, guys, we're back. Sorry about that. So, got these circle tapes folded back. And let's go ahead and see how it looks. You have padding on the inside of the box. It has a very light adhesive holding it there, but it's enough. There's still some staining from finger oils. Right there. Around the slot cart. Oh wow, there's actually scratches right there. Let's go ahead and wipe this down. So, we have Power Element Module EM01, compatible with the original Nintendo or NES game media and controllers. There's still a screw underneath the sticker, so definitely not meant to disassemble this. It's very, very disconcerting that there's a scratch right here. And it's actually a scuff and scratch. So, someone physically had to dig nails into this, probably in the process of trying not to grab it, or they scratched it with a mechanical tool of some sort, or the tips of the assembly line were not padded to keep scratching from happening. Here's the interface that goes into the Polymega. And so I can be able to test out as well for Famicom games. This is what I use. This is the My Arcade Cartridge Converter. This is around $15 on Amazon. And I will put a link for it in the description below. It's been really good. It does secure very well. And it works for, you know, flip top as well as top loader. So should be fine for this. Take a look at the controller. Yeah, it's still that uh, molded plastic. You hear how high pitched that sounds? That tells you that it's not a high grade plastic. It does have a Velcro wrap on the cable again. Go ahead and wipe this down real quick. I do like the shape of the controller just because it not just being a rectangle like the original Nintendo controller does offer a little bit of you know hand comfort because it is rounded on the edges as well as right here and it's really small. I would say it's about the same width as an original Nintendo controller. Alright. The pad feels good. It does have 
you can see a little bit of a convex to it. See where it pits. It does have a rounded top with the uh, conductive rubber solenoid. The ball under here, you can push straight down on it. And then you have a little bit of wiggle room in all the directions. Because it is not a true ball top underneath it, it does have more of a flattened type of top. These buttons feel good. Very, very springy. This is the mushy, mushy, mushy button. Or mushy, mushy button. These actually feel pretty good. I like the larger size of these buttons. And I like that they don't have that concave sharp edge on them. This is the perfect size buttons that I would have put on a six button Sega controller. All the same size, not the smaller top row like they did on the Saturn and the Sega 6 button. We have a quality TPU material here. It does have some flexibility to it, so it means it will resist kinking in the cable. I wouldn't go and start wrapping your controller cable around your controller or anything, though. That's why they give you this nice option of an included velcro wrap cable feels really nice it seems like it's not quite a paracord but it is a nylon sleeve and it is a uh, pretty good thickness to it i would say it's at least a, a double if not triple shielded to help with interference and latency all right so Let's check and see how well controllers go in. Give me one moment and I'll grab something else to try in it. Okay guys, we're back. So I went and grabbed the Wingman Converter S-NES so that we can be able to check and see how well it goes into the ports. That way I could use an 8 bit Bluetooth controller on here. Alright, so comparing the print here you can see a small bit of difference. This one has a higher texture. Also has a thicker texture on these circles here. See how thin this is on the Polymega? By comparison, that's why they sell this controller for, I think it's like 25 or $30 on their website just for the controller to get another one so you would have to be more careful about happenstance insertion of these into consoles and stuff just because this is a thinner plastic mold and they do move show you with the uh, trusty never rusty radio shack micro driver see how easily they move compared to this takes a lot more force to get these to move than it does this so be careful so you don't shear these off of the inside of the connector, just to make you aware. So, let's go ahead, 
That's a very secure fit. Very secure. Takes quite a bit of shaking to get this loose. By comparison, start easy. So let's go back to this one. Let's go in this port this time. It's a lot tighter port because it's at an angle. It's not just straight up and down. It's trying to hold the pivot of the angle. So. Try this one in this port. That port, they're about the same. But this port is much quicker to drop. Looking at the ports themselves here, you can see how much surround it does have for space. So this is similar to original controller. Let's check out this power stick here from Retrobit. The connector on it. By the way guys, this is moddable to change buttons if you want to. It is a very loud, but it is using arcade quality buttons and it is arcade size buttons. So these are 30 millimeters, and this has a ball top that you can change out for another top on it if you want to. So it's just a standard uh, 6.25 or 0.625 inches on the uh, threading. So. Same thing as what most JLF compatible sticks are. So you could put a bat top on this if you wanted to. But, you know, let's go ahead and check the connector here. Compare. Okay, so you can see that this is a lot more refined mode molding and I've used this a lot more too but they are the same thickness comparing to your polymega so you got power stick wingman S dash NES converter and Polymega. Holy cheese, that went in really, really solid. It actually takes effort to get it out whenever you get it all the way in. Because, good lord. Really solid. Goes to show you the effort or the quality that Retrobit does make. They produce some of the best size comparison and designed original hardware controllers that I've ever seen. I want a Dreamcast version arcade stick from them. And I want a Dreamcast 6-button face controller like the ASCII Dream Gear. But they're working on those uh, Dreamcast controllers. So maybe in time we'll see those.
By the way, guys, if you guys want to find one of these for yourself, I got this one open box on Amazon for $11. They retailed, I believe the MSRP was $25. So, I would prefer this all day long over this. Just because I'm an arcade kid. I grew up in arcades and I worked in six different arcades. So, Alright, moving on. Let's check out... Is this the one where I resealed? I believe so. The cartridge converter from my arcade. Not your arcade, my arcade. Just kidding. Got circle tapes on the sides. I'm just taking these off of here. That's what it was. Okay. Um, this one is brand new, actually. The other one I had, I actually gave it to my friend whenever I got my Analog NT Mini Noir. So, that's why this one's not been opened. Aha! Device getting warm warning. Well, hurry it up. Alright, so, yeah, like I said, this is about $15 on Amazon whenever I got it. Just have your adapter. And your cartridge converter manual user guide. So this will fit even a uh, EverDrive N8 Plus Famicom Edition. Same shape and size as an official Nintendo controller. So, let's go ahead, start with Astanax, one of my favorite Nintendo games, just to see how smoothly and how well the cartridge slot is on this module. Yeah, it's holding very well. Do you have to kind of wiggle it out, which I'm not a fan of. If you don't want to wiggle it out or wiggle it in, hold your cartridge by the sides and apply downward pressure to insert and release. Still wants to go in at an angle, so but you can pull it out by holding firmly your thumbs on the sides. Yeah, that's just a really crunchy cartridge slot. See how my thumbs are. 
pull up from the sides like that and you can be able to get it out evenly so it doesn't have as much transfer and scrubbing on the slots. This is my roughest game that I have for Nintendo. Let's see if it uh, goes in smoothly. This was found on the side of the road, by the way. So, whenever I was a teenager, I had my own uh, place before I went in the military. This cartridge slot slightly warped on the uh, cartridge PCB. Had to put a little bit more force than I'm comfortable with. Same way though, releases the same amount of tension. It does hold very well, but the biggest thing you have to be concerned about is smacking it this way. What I do wish is this thing outright supported Famicom without an adapter. I mean, all of their other modules support both Japanese, US, and European for NTSC U, PAL, and NTSC J, except for Famicom. If they make a Famicom a, a element module, it better be able to play Famicom Disk System games. That's the only gripe I really have. So, let's check with a Famicom game here. Let's try this one first. They do go in from the back. And then you just slide it down. That went in smoothly. It is level, as you can see. So that's how you play Famicom games on this. That is on there good now. It's almost like it locked in. One moment, guys. Okay, literally, I had to plant both hands like this and pull up from here and here to get this to release. If I could find a better way of doing it <laughs> that was just like, oh yeah, it's just this, and then you put that in, well, that kind of make it even more difficult to get out. Put in, uh, actually, see if I have handy any of my loose carts that have uh, the tall, tall, Dragon Ball or uh, Kamen Rider carts. That went in smooth and straight. Straight down. Yeah, that came out easy too. <laughs> the issue is how well will this come out? Not bad. Not bad. So yeah. As you can see This thing reminds me of Game Genie. 
the old glue game genie too before they changed stuff around where it had the rubber um, grip on the top of it like it came out it had the sling and then it came back here and you had a rubber tack that went on the back or on the top of the cartridge edge and it clipped over very first game genie the one that came with the code book that was that thick Now the only thing left to do is try one more Nintendo cartridge and then see. That went in straight. This is a, a backup or an extra that I have that's loose. I've got it complete in box over on the shelf. I am a uh, collector of Vic Tokai titles, so... Anything that's released Vic Tokai, that was the first thing that I completed collection of when I was younger. Alright, so put this back in here. Manual user guide here for the cart adapter. English. How to use. Like that. FAQs. Warranty. France. Spanish. Italian. Portuguese, Deutsch, Chinese, I believe, can't tell if it's Japanese or Chinese, uh, is that Cyrillic, um, or Script? Ta-da. Go ahead. Pop this back in its box. Reason I've not been using, like I said before, is the uh, analog NT Mini Noir don't require anything because it takes both cartridges. Alright. So, let's go ahead take out this thing. By the way, guys, I did clean this with every single cleaner that I possibly have. I got some of the skin oils off, but you can see right there the fingertips where that was previously there. Cannot seem to get those off. Also right there where it was grabbed. By the way, this is a button. Ajax button. Got our tracks. Let gravity go. And there is the power configuration for the EM01 element. Keep this out. It's just an unboxing and overview. I'm not actually hooking stuff up right now because I don't yet have the ability to get everything up and going on my Sony Trinitron 32 inch sitting back there. It's a uh, 16 by 9. It does. 1080i and 720p on HDMI it is a uh, 
CRT tube, flat tube TV. So, yeah. Looking on in the packaging, no manual. Didn't think there would be. Let's go ahead and see how well this ejects. Smooth. Let's go ahead and pop this box back closed. So yeah, guys, that, guys, that is uh, one module down. Three more to go. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave them below. And I will have links in the description for the things that were shown in this video that I can find links to that are in stock or available still. If you have... Uh, the desire to follow the channel, consider subscribing to know where I have new videos going live. You know, if you like this content, give a thumbs up. If you want to know where I have new items coming in that may be potential future content, consider subscribing or following me on Twitter at Zybernight. And guys, this is Zybernight, your Tech and Games Crusader. Hope you guys have a good night, good day, take care. Thanks for watching. We will see you later.